Greetings, everyone. I want you to listen to me very carefully because I'm going to sort of give you a hook. And from that hook, I segue into another story. Now, there's a video of a gentleman online um, crying that this woman left him. Apparently, he went to the States trying to make a better life for himself and his family. And he talks about, you know, working really hard, doing some jobs that doesn't help him feel better about himself. But he does it anyway to take care of his family. Sent his money back home to look after his children. Only to find out that the lady um, has moved on with someone else. And I see all these videos going around and people talking, especially men. Sometimes these men really get to me, you know. Yes, these men are very, a lot of these men act like they like women, but they don't. A lot of times they're so quick to jump on women and say the worst. Men leave women all the time. Men have five, six, seven, eight kids with women and abandon them for somebody else who doesn't have any kids for them. Men do that all the time. So this lady decided to move on. I don't know her story. When you listen to the man's side, it's very sad. And you might find yourself in a situation where you want to take sides and you want to curse this woman out, but you don't know the story. You don't know. You don't know their history. And also there are some women who just can't be alone. So even if his intention was to go away and make their lives better, some women just don't like to be alone for a minute. They've got to always have something warm. Between the woman is allowed to leave if she decides this is no longer uh, good for her, she can leave. The attitude where women have to be tied to one man and the man is free to roam the world and the earth is not a good thing. These double standards they've got to go, but I'm afraid they won't. As um, is the situation with racism and, you know, patriarchy and all the things that put people in subordinate roles, they won't change because, you see, it's not a thing. It's an attitude. It's a way of thinking. Individuals are only going to change when the thing doesn't profit them anymore. So without hearing the lady's story... Um, those of you who asked me to talk about it, uh, without hearing her side of the story, I'm not going to jump in. I'm saying that the man seems hurt and he could very well love his wife, his, part, his past, um, you know, relationship or I don't know if they were living together. I don't know. You see, that's the thing. We don't know anything about these individuals except what you hear the man saying. Um, whatever it is, uh, I acknowledge his hurt and his pain. Obviously he's crying. He's feeling some kind of way about what happened, but soon he'll find out that all things work together for good and that, uh, you'll find somebody if he's smart enough to know that he should surround himself with individuals who are positive, who can encourage him that eventually he will find someone who's better, better for him. Not all relationships are meant to last forever. And when, uh, the spirit moves, to, to separate you from people at the beginning of it. You just don't see and understand what is behind the scenes, what the universe is working out. You are saying, don't, you're allowed to say no. Now, a lot of times when you say no, there's always these repercussions and these penalties. Let me give an example. Started my own childcare business. And my first client that came to me, wanted to come here on a part-time basis. Interviewed a family, and they were just enamored with the program, you could tell. Even though, see, in the beginning, they wanted me to feel like, well, we have a lot of options, so, you know, you'll hear from us. I knew they were in love. I could see it in their eyes. They were just fascinated with what I was offering. They, they liked the place a lot. And they, like, they liked my philosophy. But, you know, there are some people who will always treat you like, I don't need you. You need us. And listen, 
I've already said, even if I'm starving, you can't use money. You can't use anything on, on me. You can't. I'm just not that type of person. So I said to them, you know, what you need to do is to consider your child and your needs and do what is best for your family. When they called to say that they wanted to say yes or they were saying yes, the woman started to ask me about my teaching experience and I thought it was quite irrelevant because even though I had intention of doing that, to interview me again about my education really was a stretch because though I would incorporate that, you're not paying me $3 an hour to find out what is my qualification in terms of educating your child. So at that point, I said, you know what? I've changed my mind. I don't think I'm the right person for you individuals. They begged me and they called the other place that I was associated to and begged them to ask me to change my mind. I thought about it. I called back and I said, okay, it's only part time. I'm changing my mind. When this child came, I fell in love with him. Beautiful kid. He's not of my culture. And so when I ask families, what, what your kid like to eat, you know, in the interim, you know, give me stuff to make them feel at home. The couple said, we don't care what you feed him. Whatever. I'm like, I make Jamaican food. Sometimes it's spicy. We make porridge and things like that. Like she says, I don't care. I want him to experience other cultures. I'm like, okay. So I started feeding this kid. Cornmeal porridge, oatmeal porridge, rice and peas, oh, you name it. Kid fell in love with it. Well, they said, we have all these options. But yet they were begging me to say yes, and I did. As I said, introduced this child to all this food and he had an amazing appetite. He ate well, loved his food. But I was having a problem from the very beginning. When I needed supplies, I had to beg for these supplies. And one of the most insulting things that was happening to me that having a child that comes in at seven in the morning or before that, sometimes 6.30, and every morning this child would become, would come here plastered with you know what. And it was a delicate situation because I know on your way this can happen, but it was happening so often. And after a while, I got fed up about it. And I told these individuals, you've got to acknowledge when you bring this child that this has happened. I don't mind if you're late and you're rushing and you don't have time to do it, but acknowledge it. Don't take him out of his bed overnight with this thing plastered to him and expect me to clean it. I think that's an insult. It took me a long time. It took me like three months to say anything, but I finally did. Well, they came and they apologized. But weeks would follow and the individual would keep bringing it up. I don't know. I don't know how we wouldn't have noticed that. So it was very, it was very obvious that because I mentioned it to this individual, because I said, no, you can't do this. They took offense to it. And continued caring for this kid. I was walking around on eggshells with this child. I'm afraid. I don't want him to fall. You know, just super, super, super cautious, almost paranoid. If I take the child to the park, uh, I make sure that the sand doesn't touch his foot. That's not a way to live, but I like the kid so much. And I would ask for supplies. I would ask for milk. These individuals expected me to buy milk for this child. I provided all the meals. Keep in mind, three something an hour I was making. And I was providing meals out of that too. I would need diapers after mine. I need a change of clothes. What's the problem with packing your child with extra clothing? It's not, there's not going to be any harm if you have more than you need. The straw that brought the camels back is I made juice made my own juice, blend my own juice, healthy juice, and I gave it to this child. A little was left in his bottle, 
and they sent me a very rude message to say that I was giving the kid juice, even though they didn't want him to have juice. But it's the irony of it. You brought your kid. You've never brought an hour road cookie. You don't want to bring milk. You don't want to bring simple supplies. Nothing for this child to eat. Even though I explained the cost of taking care of a ch child per week and how much I actually was being compensated by the organization I was dealing with. And they would bring him, and they never brought anything for him to eat. Never brought him a little snack, nothing. Just said, whatever you like, and feeding him. But suddenly was overly upset about a little juice that I blended. And so at that point, I said, well, if you have acted this way about a little juice, what would happen if he fell? And so I, I severed ties, I cut ties. I say all this to say that some folks are able to say no. It's their birthright. It's their given right to say no. But when you decide to say no, you decide to say no, I won't allow you to speak to me this way. No, I won't allow you to disrespect me. No, I won't allow you to, you know, decide how I ought to be. We have everyone coming out and chastising you when you have the ability to say no the woman said no she's allowed to move on with her life if it's no longer beneficial to her if she's not happy anymore whatever her story even if she's wicked as people say she's moved on let let her go let her karma come to visit her i hope that gentleman find a way to understand that all things usually work out the way it's supposed to and to understand that even he, though he feels like he's in the pit right now, all that will change. It's okay to say no. We have to teach our children from the very young that it's okay to say no. That sense of entitlement to people's life, to people's way of thinking, is something that we have to analyze and change. Stay blessed, everyone.